do you want to do an interview with us in August in Regina? And a friend can vouch for us. I'm the friend, Mick. I'm the friend, and I can vouch for him. It's the only interview I did. I actually was supposed to do two more, but I totally blew them off to do this one, legitimately. So you have to do it, Mick. They're both wonderful. These kids are cool, and they had a ton of swag. I got a fuck. I got a fuck from this interview. <laughs> Best interview ever. Neither Mr. Sacco nor Al Snow were harmed in the making of this video. Viewer enjoyment is encouraged. So, this... Even though a lot of not people, like me being hinting clues out, this is Mick Foley. We're doing an interview, and well, right now, so... Well, let's let's stop, start. St stop, Can start I tell out? you, I have been interviewed by many people, but none sitting like that. So this is groundbreaking. This is a, yeah, this is going to be historic. So go ahead. I hear you guys have been working very diligently on these questions, and I'm, I'm ready for anything. Is there a way we can clickbait this video by mentioning J Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> I think you already have. Yeah, I think you already have. Yeah, just, uh, I'll, I'll mention him. Did I mention that I tag team with Dwayne Johnson? And now, no. boom, there's your clickbait. I've already talked about him, right? Yeah, defeated him. Defeated him twice. Do you well, times. Yeah, but we don't need to go there now, not while I'm yeah, sitting here. Yeah, we, we don't, don't need to go. Yeah, let's not do that. You know, I've only beaten The Undertaker twice, but they were the ones that counted. Go ahead. Do you still enjoy theme parks? <laughs> I do still enjoy theme parks. I went to Knobles Grove in Elysburg, Pennsylvania for my birthday, and I've been going to Santa's Village in Jefferson, New Hampshire, every year for 23 consecutive years. When is the last time you visited a theme park? Oh, it was uh, the, the end of June. Can I throw that? Okay. It just added like a boomerang. You, how'd you do that? Yeah. Mine just floated in the air and came right back yeah, to me. Yeah, okay. That, Tom's actually pretty good. Don't All right, well, I'm going to try it again. Ah, oh, darn. It went negatively that time. I'm, I'm the worst in the world at these card flinging. What is the difference between performing in a club with your spoken word and comedy tours up, as opposed to wrestling crowds besides the amount of people? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, you don't need a large amount of people to have a great time. And I was just in Nanaimo. We had a little less than 100 people. I had an amazing time there. Last night we had about 230, and some of the crowds will even be bigger than that. Um, it's a little bit different. You know, you're trying to get people to um, to listen closely to stories. Sometimes the fans have to resist the urge to like chant things because you really want them to listen. Thank you. You have four memoirs, four children books, and two novels. What is the next for the author, Mick Foley? Well, actually, there's a fifth memoir I write about. Some of my, it's a, it's a Christmas memoir, and it was so little read that uh, I don't blame you. It slipped, kind of slipped under the memoir. And what was the question? Uh, what is the next for the author, Mick Foley? Oh, the author, Mick Foley. You know what I do? I work on stories sometimes just because I enjoy writing. So last year for my wife's birthday, I gave her a Mick Foley novella, about 25,000 words I worked on. No one will ever see it for her, but uh, it was a very nice gift. Do you still write your books longhand? No, not anymore. I'm really proud of the fact that I did the first seven or eight longhand, and... Um, the last, oh, the, the first nine. It was only the last memoir that I did completely uh, without the use of long handwriting. But I, in the meantime, my handwriting has gotten really good. I worked on it after I had my hip, uh, my hip replaced, and uh, every night for three or four hours, I'd work on my handwriting. And I think it's safe to say I have the best handwriting in wrestling. Stephanie McMahon was kind enough to fire me as Raw General Manager. 
giving me the opportunity to have my hip replaced and my knee replaced because it turns out that some of the things I did in and around the ring were good for me. My mom was just sure. How was the latest visit down? Under? Oh, it was an excellent visit, except the travel demands were a little bit, uh, well, that was even worse than me. Travel demands were tough, guys. Uh, Australia is a huge country, and there's only like cities on the. It's not like the United States where we have states and people living all through those states. It's like you have you have cities going around the perimeter of the, of the country slash continent. It's the only country that is its own continent, and there's really uh, nothing in the way of large population centers in the middle. So we had to fly every single day. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh man, my guilty pleasure. Um, Al Snow matches. No, 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 that's not a pleasure. That's not, I do feel guilty after watching them, but they're not a pleasure. My guilty pleasure would be um, When Calls the Heart, the uh, Hallmark series that takes place in British Columbia. What is, what's your pet peeve? I believe it's people who start sentences with the words, I know you're with your family, but, because they've already identified they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, and then they make the decision that, doggone it, they're going to do it anyway. So that's my pet peeve. It was only in this ring that I looked down and realized that I was wearing flannel pants and a flannel shirt. Uh, and and a fanny pack in public. Where do you get your plaid? Well, generally, I, uh, I, can, I order a little online. Um, occasionally, one is gifted to me, and this one happens to be uh, a present from Alstow. It's got his collar and elbow logo on it. On the back, I'll turn around for your sake. Just, you can zoom in on that. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think Al only gave it to me so he could take a photo of me wearing it and then sell it and capitalize on the way I popularized plaid in the wrestling world because he's opportunistic like that. Does your background in wrestling help prevent ha hecklers at your comedy shows? <laughs> no. No, because I don't really get I don't really get hecklers. I get people who are a little maybe a little over enthusiastic and they think if like they yell out random things they're helping me. Uh, but uh, all the experience and the poise I learned with a microphone in my days of wrestling, it helps me to quiet those over enthusiastic, over enthusiastic fans. What is the most surprising reaction you've ever received at a comedy show? At a comedy show, well, uh, there was a uh, an evening in Dublin, Ireland, that did not go well for me. You guys are too young to know about things uh, like this, but <laughs> but I just prefaced it by saying you're too young, and they said, but let's just say the crowd was a little rowdy. Okay, did not have a good time there. I was a little overwhelmed. And the next night I was going to be in Belfast, Ireland, which is an even rowdier city. And I was really dreading it. Instead, I went on stage and it felt like I was in WrestleMania. They gave me that kind of reaction. I really appreciate you supporting uh, wrestling in your area. This is where it all happens. I've wrestled a lot more places like this than I have been in WrestleMania. And I was just grateful. You guys worked so hard. We met Cody Rhodes and the week All In went on sale. What are your thoughts about All In? Well, I'm so excited for Cody and everyone who's taking part uh, in All In. Uh, I sent out something on social media wishing all of them a, an amazing uh, weekend. Uh, my daughter's up there right now. So I think anything that's good for uh, uh, the guys is good for wrestling, including WWE. And I think a show that's... Uh, you know, promoted, um, run, wrestled obviously by the uh, by the guys. When I say guys, I mean women too. That's a collective term, like by the guys. Even if I said by the boys, I'm still including women as part of the boys. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just part of wrestle speak. I just thought you guys were old enough to know that. But because I don't get out this way, um, I do have a one man show. It's a really good show. I hope somebody can make it. It would be okay if, I mean, like I said, don't get out this way, instead of just pandering to the audience and saying, like, it's great to be here, right here, in this part of Saskatchewan. Is wrestling the healthiest, healthiest it has ever been? 
I don't know if it's the healthiest it's ever been, only because I don't have the historical data to back up a claim like that. I will say it feels like it's the healthiest it's been in a long time. How did social media change wrestling? Well, it has changed it for better and for worse. You know, you can get the word out for something like All In. Um, even tonight when I'm on my way to the Cali Curling Club, you can just set something out, hashtag at Cali Curling Club, see at 6.30 and get the word out. But I think sometimes we get overly excited for shorter periods of time. So, for example, the famous match that we in the Foley House still refer to as the Heck in a Cell, if it had taken place now, it probably would have trended with a hashtag for about three days and then been quickly forgotten. And instead, it was able to grow organically. So I think uh, social media works for the good and to the detriment of today's wrestling. Miracle. Every week, the wrestling news sites always seem to have a new Vince McMahon, Chris Jericho conversation. Do you think they still play at night texting or calling each other? Well, I just had a conversation with Mr. McMahon, a text conversation. I said, uh, Mr. McMahon, can I be in the main event of WrestleMania this year? He said, no. There you go. An exclusive. I know where we are. All right? It's a long night. I'll get there eventually. What is the best wrestling faction you've ever seen? Ah, oh, the Four Horsemen is still the best wrestling faction. Just, I get asked this a lot, and I think if I could have one more match, it would be with Canada's own. Me and Brett, at our ages, would be a pretty slow match, wouldn't it? I'm talking about Kevin Owens, right? That'd be a good match, right? Yeah. You suck, Kevin. Because at least for one time, one time only, I'd have the best physique in the ring. And he's not going to mind if I say that. Okay. Being in Western Canada, what is your favorite memory of the Hart Foundation? Or what is your favorite memory of the Hart family or Hart Foundation? Well, I've got lots of great memories of uh, traveling with Owen Hart. But if I had to type one about the Hart Foundation, it would be a Canadian Stampede in 1997, one of the best pay-per-views WWE has ever done. What's Triple H like? You're talking about the same Triple H who oh, is the president of the company I might one day like to work for again? <laughs> one of the greatest of all time. <laughs> he is one of the greatest of all time. And I get a lot of credit for being a proponent of the women's division, but Triple H is actually the guy making a lot of that stuff happen. So he's really been a visionary, bringing up the NXT brand, his uh, career in the ring, speaks for itself, he's one of the best of all time, but he's not in the Hall of Fame, is he? Although, I would guess because he decides who's in the Hall of Fame, if he wanted to be there, he would be. So yeah, he's one of the greatest and there was something awesome about being in there with Triple H. And I'm not just saying that because I one day might like to work for him. And I have another question, okay. just quickly. Follow up, Who were wrestlers you looked up to? Oh, wow, I looked up to so many guys. Uh, Terry Funk, and there's an N in that name, so it's not as if I said a bad word. We, yeah, yeah, we actually uh, watched The Hell in a Cell with uh, you and The Undertaker. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, I looked up to The Undertaker for sure. And then Terry Funk was... He came in and he got choke slammed out of his shoes. Remember that? His shoes came off his feet. So I'll give you those two names. If I look up to anybody, oh, Ivan Koloff, and I'll, I'll leave you on a positive note, okay? Ivan Koloff was a former WWF champion. He defeated Bruno San Martino. But despite that, despite the fact that I was relatively new to wrestling in 1990, I was a five-year veteran, but I hadn't accomplished much, Ivan Koloff treated me like he would anyone else. And I thought to myself, you know, if I ever get to be a big star, this is how I'm going to treat people because I like how this feels. And eventually, I think it's safe to say I became a big star and I tried my best to treat people the way Ivan Koloff treated me. Sound good? Yeah. All right, yeah? Okay, one thing to know? Hey, listen, guys, I got to run. But thank yeah. you so much for having me on as a guest on your show, okay? Right here in Regina, Saskatchewan. Thank you.